here I go again. I have this real uh, spider web. Um, I have this real preoccupation with paths. If I see a path that's going off, I always want to follow it. I really do love variety. I don't know whether it's a new thing or whether I've always been that way, but if there's another choice, I always like to take it. Sometimes I wonder whether I'm preoccupied with the next shiny object, not because it's a, a personality trait that's truly awesome, but because it's a, a habit that's been built in thanks to uh, a lot of use of computers and the internet. Does the internet cause us to continually seek uh, diversion and distraction rather than concentrating on one thing? Well, it's got me stumped. A great overview to the subject can be found in a book called The Shallows, but the book talks about how um, media over time is exponentially making attention spans shorter. Uh, he cites examples such as the Telegraph and news headlines that basically were changing news into large pieces of prose, into smaller and smaller statements, which of course comes off the work of uh, Marshall McLuhan, which I've, who I've spoken about before. Global. But then he talks specifically about the internet and web browsing and how it does encourage continually flipping from one subject to another. So he posits that we won't be able to learn subjects in depth. So you're reading an article online when you get an instant message with a link to a funny photo, which of course you have to share. And now you're reading your Facebook news wall, which sends you to a video of a panda bear attacking a kid. And now you're reading Wikipedia to learn everything you can about the violent behavior of panda bears. And this is what three minutes on the internet can be like. We live like this all the time. That our, our ability to uh, process, do deep cognition, to question, to rational, rationalize in a deep way, will be impacted of technology. Although I have seen evidence of this myself, if you look at um, social networking sites such as Twitter or the uh, notorious YouTube comment section, but I also see um, large pieces of prose being popular. One of the most popular uh, type, link types, if you will, on LinkedIn and Facebook happen to be uh, long, long form articles. So if long form articles still exist, it means we still want to explore articles in a deep way, I think. I wonder if that desire is enough though. I mean, I used to blog a great deal and write long form articles, but now I do videos. more